song inspired by the Republican debates. I turned on my TV, though it was hard to see these men who would be head of state. What a great country, from sea to shining sea, we watched the Republicans debate. Newt stood with his third wife and said, you bet your life the president is a red. He wants to tax the rich a lot, take your limo and your yacht, he wants to have the banker's heads. And if he gets in again, he'll paint the White House pink and then he'll hire Chavez as his VP. Then we'll be right on track to give capitalism the sack, along with the insurance industry. If only it were true, if only it were true, I'd be so happy, wouldn't you? If only it were true, if only it were true, if only it were true. They're all sing-alongs, by the way, which of course, sing-along is a song you've heard before, so they may or may not actually be sing-alongs, but they're intended to be. You know? He'll give everyone food stamps and wheelchair ramps. He'll subsidize windmills and maple syrup. He'll cripple industries with eco-friendly policies, and pretty soon we will be just like Europe. He'll shut down oil wells, give out solar cells to every home in Delaware and Illinois. He'll ban logging in the parks, he'll send the works of Karl Marx to the homes of every American girl and boy. He'll abolish pesticides, he'll be giving out free rides and free lunches too in his high-speed trains. He'll start lots of public works full of union perks, he'll fill all the cities up with bicycle lanes. If only it were true, if only it were true, I'd be so happy, wouldn't you? If only it were true, if only it were true, if only it were true. Watch out, his critics tell, this shall be our death knell. He'll pull the troops out and end all of our wars. He'll got military spending, our empire will be ending, and soon we'll be invaded by the Moors. He'll legalize all drugs, give away beer mugs and hookahs to every child, and Korans. He'll ban religions from the schools, give 40 acres and a mule to every person who makes less than 50 grand. He'll close Guantanamo to torture, he'll say no. He'll make us all drive electric cars. He'll reinstate the fairness doctrine, take off that damn flag pen and he'll put Rupert Murdoch behind bars. If only it were true, if only it were true, I'd be so happy, wouldn't you? If only it were true, if only it were true, if only it were true. If only it were true, if only it were true, I'd be so happy, wouldn't you? If only it were true, it were true if only it were true. I actually wrote a book about how to do this for a living, in which I said, memorize your lyrics. No. <laughs> Practicing's good too. I haven't even practiced this song. It's They're making us buy health care, and the Republicans can't stand it. They're just not asking to get their way. They demand it. If they can't change the bathwater, they'll throw the baby out the door. They just can't stand to see such subsidies going to the poor. So they shut down the government with whatever message that might send. If you need a mortgage or a student loan, there's no money left to lend. All the babies who need wicks so they can have some dinner are just going to have to go without and get a little thinner. Heading out to Yellowstone, better make another plan. And go to some country that's functioning like Tajikistan. But if you're in Pakistan or Yemen, watch out for the drones. The budget for them was left entirely alone. Don't our taxes pay the gunships to do the things they do? Why don't they shut down the military too? 
If you want safety in the workplace or a tax rebate, and if you're hoping someone might have checked out that food you just ate, waiting for VA benefits, you might just start digging your grave hole. The only fully funded branch is active duty on patrol. Don't our taxes pay the gunships to do the things they do? Why don't they shut down the military too? Hoping the CDC might warn us of an outbreak of disease, you might just lick your thumb and stick it in the breeze because the biggest employer in the country has now laid off its workforce, except the ones responsible for dropping bombs, of course. Don't our taxes pay the gunships to do the things they do? Why don't they shut down the military? Shut down the military, shut down the military too. It was, uh, yeah, it's just very, I mean, everywhere is historical, but, um, you know, we we're very close to the Canadian border. And uh, in 1812, uh, as you may know, the United States attacked Canada uh, for no particular reason and uh, burnt uh, the city of Toronto, which was then called York, to the ground. And um, uh, upon which time the Canadians retaliated and won the war. And, um, of course, uh, you know, before that we had what, what they call the American Revolution, which was, the, the, the big secret about that is that it was actually a war between Britain and France, which France won, with the support of the people in the colonies, which made up a minority of the troops and, 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 and produced none of the weapons, um, and which bankrupted France. And then, uh, and then Napoleon took over, and then they had the Napoleonic War. So, so then when the U.S. attacked Canada, there was no French people to help out, and so it didn't go very well. And, um, but the Americans had already swallowed their own propaganda and, uh, and, and thought that they were you know, spreading democracy and all that. And the whole thing was never very popular in the first place. You know? um, most people didn't really give a shit about whether it was one elite or the other. Uh, fighting or winning, you know, and uh, but so I was in um, Ross Trevor in County Down in Ireland, hanging out with a a, a, a veritable folk music legend, Tommy Sands, and um, and there's a there's a very phallic monument in in uh, Ross Trevor to a guy named Robert Ross, um, who who was from there. Actually, the town was named after his family because they were rich fuckers and. Um, but Robert Ross did at least one useful thing in his life that I thought, despite the fact that he was a wealthy Protestant thief, that I would write a song about him anyway. Robert Ross was from Ross Trevor. He was born in County Down. His family was given land there by the British Crown. He was a man born of the gentry, born with wealth and fame. But he joined the British Army to serve his queen and make his name. In the Napoleonic Wars, he fought in many lands, in Holland and in Spain, in the far-off Egyptian sands. He was wounded there in battle, came back to fight another day, and he was sent off to attack the USA. York had been sacked and burned by invading Yankee men, but the Canadians regrouped, chased the Yankees home, and then the British Navy made its way to the shores of D.C. town, where General Ross burned the White House down. The year was 1814, the U.S. was in retreat. It was a Canadian victory, an American defeat. Without the French to help them, they got their ass whipped by the Crown when General Ross burned the White House down. The place had just been constructed only 12 years before, but it had to be rebuilt soon after this disastrous war. The president turned tail and ran like a raggedy clown when General Ross burned the White House down. He was killed a few months later. Irish rebels stopped him in his tracks. He was buried in Nova Scotia, in the town of Halifax. He might have been forgotten, but he'll forever be renowned. He's the man who burned the White House down. He's the man who burned the White House down. I just, I just, I just got to back to the United States from from uh, being away for two and a half months, and I was, uh, I just got flew here 
uh, two days ago. And in Europe, um, in Europe, if you go to, if you're like being a tourist around Europe, you'll notice that 1849 is a very significant date. And you might think that a lot happened in 1849, but it's actually not true. But, but, but what did happen is like a lot of parliaments came into existence, and uh, a lot of monarchies became constitutional monarchies, and uh, the peasants got rights um, and land and all sorts of exciting things like that. And um, and if you go around to the buildings and you see 1849 all over the place and you think, oh, what a significant year. And what they don't mention, of course, is the reason why 1849 was so significant is because um, all those uh, royal buildings got torched in 1848. And, you know, every monarchy in Europe outside of Britain and Russia was overthrown in 1848. It was like, you know, even better than the Arab Spring. It was like, you know, they, they, it wasn't just two governments, it was like almost all of them. And, um, and they, all, they all came back to power, to power a few months later, <clears throat> but in a very changed environment. And, um, and everybody in Europe knows about 1848, pretty much, you know. Uh, and and what I've noticed is that um, 1848 was also a hugely significant year here in the US, but people don't tend to know that. And, um, and it was especially around upstate New York that it was um, very significant and uh, because it was the last year of a nine year long rent strike and it was not a coincidence that the landlord settled in 1848. Before 1848 you didn't have uh, much in the way of like small farmers and stuff you know it was pretty much feudalism. <laughs> Patroons came from Holland to America, became landlords where none had been before. Soon one man owned half a million acres on both sides of the Hudson River shore. He invited families to move in and give him 30% of everything they grew every year. This is how they pay the rent. His name was Rensselaer. He became one of the richest men on earth. In today's terms, $90 billion is how much he'd be worth. All this for doing nothing but saying all this was his. I have the power of the state behind me, and I'm in the landlord biz. After 200 years of this and one revolution won, another Rensselaer had another son. And this Rensselaer was greedier than his ancestors dead and past. It was the 1840s and things were changing fast. It was the straw that broke the back. The bottle was uncorked. They started organizing meetings. The tenant farmers of New York. They found the strength of numbers. They found the power of suggestion. They found each other asking the same question. Who gave you the right to be a landlord? To live a life of ease while others toil? Who gave you the right to be a rich man while the rest of us pay you so we can work this soil? They vowed they would stop the rent collection. They vowed they'd bring this madness to an end. And when one blew the tin horn of distress, he soon found he had a thousand friends with calico skirts masks upon their faces on horseback armed with knives and guns they chanted and they yelled and they kept their farms and they kept the sheriffs on the run they asked who gave you the right to be a landlord to live a life of ease while others toil who gave you the right to be a rich man while the rest of us pay you so we can work this soil
Southerners' militias tried to stop them. But nothing could be done to break their will. And by 1848, the landlords buckled, sold their holdings to the farmers in the hills. Yes, they overthrew this feudal system, but it's replaced now by speculators and banks. And you can still hear the homeless families asking of all the landed gentry in our ranks. Who gave you the right to be a landlord? To live a life of ease while others toil? Who gave you the right to be a rich man while the rest of us pay you so we can work this soil? Who gave you the right to be a landlord? To live a life of ease while others toil? Who gave you the right to be a rich man while the rest of us pay you so we can work this soil? Who gave you the right? But I'm pretty sure that it does not require any introduction here. Anthony Weiner takes pictures of his wiener and sends them off to lots of women that he's never met. Normally I wouldn't care about some guy's pubic hair, except in this case it's a politician we can hopefully soon forget. He wants to make New Yorkers proud and show he's very well endowed to be the mayor of the city from which he sends his tweets. He's a good Democrat. He'll go up to bat to the people of New York and the random women that he greets. Anthony Weiner's Weiner, these days it's all the rage. To find out more about his Weiner, just take a peek at the front page. I probably wouldn't give a shit about his adolescent wit, whether he was sexting after he resigned from Congress or before. I may not like his style as he issues his denial, but what really bugs me is he voted for the war. Now Anthony Weiner's Weiner, these days it's all the rage to find out more about his Weiner. Just take a peek at the front page. Now that it's the second scandal, maybe we can pull the handle and send Anthony and his Weiner down some flushing drain and await the politician next who will send a penile text one vile politician down but far too many still remain anthony wiener's wiener these days it's all the rage to find out more about his wiener just take a peek at the front page yeah i need to experiment i mean you know with smoking and then see if i can you know see if i still think it's exciting the times i mean smoking is usually exciting But I seem to be on some kind of a list, and I uh, keep on getting strip searched, so I got tired of traveling with marijuana. Even though they never found it, you know, but uh, I figured it was just a matter of time before they looked in the right place. <laughs> it is, isn't it? I mean, that is, it is mathematically, uh, yeah. <laughs> to visit his father out of town where he had moved to an upscale neighborhood it rains a lot in florida and it was raining on that night but everyone says exercise is good he went out for a walk to the convenience store to go out and bring some candy back but some people leave and they never come home that night it was a one-way track for the neighborhood watchman was driving in his car on a rainy night looking for a young man who might have a part to play in his personal race war. And what if this trolling vigilante sowing terror on the racist whim what if when he found this teenage boy he instead had found a man more like him what if things were different where would he be bound what if trayvon had stood his ground When 
Zimmerman approached in an unmarked vehicle when the high school student ran. What if instead he had stood there in the rain with his Skittles and his Arizona can? What if trying to avoid a conflict with this cracker who has evidently messed up in the head? Trayvon had said, I feel like my life's in danger, and he had shot that vigilante dead. What if things were different? Where would he be bound? What if Trayvon had stood his ground? Would this hooded youth be gingerly arrested, treated for his wounds and then set free? Would he be hailed as a hero by the NRA, by Limbaugh, Beck, and Hannity? Would he be found not guilty by any jury in this country? Would he be allowed to keep his gun? Or would he be sitting in a prison cell watching pundits on the TV saying, that kid really should have run? What if things were different? Where would he be bound? What if Trayvon had stood his ground? government had a secret operation massacring villages, killing millions, secretly bombing an entire nation. They wiretapped a hotel room, got caught, and the government was deposed because of secret documents Daniel Ellsberg exposed. One government came down to prevent a repetition of this fact. The next government passed the Freedom of Information Act. Each administration since then hoped it would go away, and then they finally seized the chance on a September day. They passed the Patriot Act before a single congressman had read it, but don't ask the executive how they interpret it, because that itself is secret, never to be revealed, just like their secret prisons and all the torture sessions they concealed. Then they formed the prison program so they wouldn't even have to ask compliant corporations to assist them in the task of collecting information, every email you ever wrote, every book you ever read, every call you ever made, everything you ever said. I looked into a prism. What did I see? A police state looking back at me. Secret government men lied to congressional committees. Secret information even a senator can't see. Secret bureaucrats working with secret corporations, enforcing secret laws, forming secret juries to serve a secret cause. I looked into a prism. What did I see? A police state looking back at me. forward and then he fled town. Now the secret government men mean to hunt him down. Feinstein says he's a traitor. McConnell said so too. But I'd say if we have a future it's because of the whistle that he blew. I looked into a prism. What did I see? A police state looking back at me. I looked into a prism. What did I see? A police state looking back at me. Our song, and then we'll take a little break, and then I'll do it all over again. <laughs> that sounds good. And on that brown table right there, I'm going to put some CDs and an email list, and. Uh, all these songs, especially the latest songs, are uh, you can download them for free on my website. Um, but uh, you can also buy CDs. It's like those are the options. You know.
was an alarming period 13 years ago when um, I was often the oldest person in the room at my shows, and um, and I thought, some, and that was 13 years ago, and I was the younger then, you know, and I thought something had to be done to alienate these youth, and um, and I wrote this song. I don't drive a car because they run on gas, but if I did, it didn't run on biomass. I ride a bike. Or sometimes they skateboard, so fuck off all you drivers and your yuppie hordes. Sitting all day in the traffic queues, I'm a better anarchist than you. I don't eat beef, I just live on moldy chives, or the donuts that I found in last week's dumpster dives. Look at you people in that restaurant, I think you are so sad, when you could have been eating bagels like the ones that I just had. I think it is a shame all the birds want things you do. I'm a better anarchist than you. I don't wear leather, and I like my clothes in black. And I made a really cool hammock from a moldy coffee sack. I like to hop on freight trains. I think that is so cool. It's so much funner doing this than being stuck in school. I can't believe you're wearing those brand new shiny shoes. I'm a better anarchist than you. I don't have sex. And there will be no sequel because heterosexual relationships are inherently unequal. I'll just keep on moshing to anti flag and crass until there are no differences in gender, race, or class. All you brainwashed breeders, you just haven't got a clue. I'm a better anarchist than you. I don't believe in leaders, I think consensus is the key. I don't believe in stupid notions like representative democracy. Whether or not it works, I know it is the case that only direct action can save the human race. So when I see you in your voting booth, then I know it's true. I'm a better anarchist than you. I am not a pacifist, I like throwing bricks And when the cops have caught me and I've taken a few licks I always feel lucky if I get a bloody nose Because I feel so militant and everybody knows By the time the riot is all through I'm a better anarchist than you I'm a better anarchist than you